Hi, this is Jeff Blauett, Technical Agronomist with Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And on this week's Field Friday segment, I kind of wanted to touch on some of the things that we've got going on that we're testing in our Innovate Agronomic Trial System this year. We've got lots of things going on in soybeans and corn. And I just thought I'd kind of touch base so you guys have a little bit of a appetite wetner for what we're going to have, you know, coming for data this fall on some things. Um, I guess we'll start out what we're looking at in soybeans. We're out here in one of our soybean plots. Uh, last year, one of the more interesting things, even with the weird weather we had, we did a soybean planting date and a soybean population trial. Uh, that's what we're in out here. Uh, we're, you know, we're playing with some things that you read about in trade magazines, you know, really early planting, kind of earlier than we normally have and considered in the past, and also manipulating planting populations. Some of the areas we have trouble, you know, in our territory with beans, you know, our environment and our manure makes these beans too tall and they want to tip over. So we're trying to see once what happens if we play with populations and change that plant a little bit and see if we can learn anything with what, uh, what that might help us. The visual here right now is, you know, you look at the plant height difference, you know, the tops of the plants are probably here and we're probably more in this zone here just the same variety, same planting date, just in a population difference. It may not seem like a lot when you're looking at four or five difference, four or five inches difference in plant height, but that will change its ability to stand through the season. So, one of the things we've got going on in soybeans, uh, we've been doing, this is the second, we'll have some biological in furrow data. We're playing with something uh, that, you know, on the same soils as we did last year, the same strips, trying to stack the biologicals after year and see if we learn anything there. We've got uh, that out in some soybean plots this year, several parts of our territory. We've also got, you know, our normal fungicide. Uh, we're doing a bunch of seed treatment, additional seed treatment, and some soybean seed treatment uh, individually. We're kind of considering, you know, we're looking at a few more new ones as well, but we're kind of also considering what happens if we stack those seed treatments together in the same package, are we still going to gain the benefits that they all bring when they're together in the, on the seed or not? So we're evaluating that to see if that's worth considering and profitable for you guys. We've got, you know, of course our late season trials we always do with some various fungicides, some newer micronutrient concepts. Uh, we've also, this year, we, we played just a little bit last year. For any of you guys that are familiar with liquid uh, protein, the QLF, liquid feed protein for beef cattle. We've played a little bit with that as a sugar source on soybeans. Uh, last year we did a very little bit of testing and it was kind of intriguing. We got a response on it. So this year we've got a more extensive trial evaluating that several different timings and several different application types. So we'll see if we learn anything there. On the corn side, uh, we've got some various different starter fertilizer uh, trials. We're playing with some different additives and different things to have in the starter mix. Uh, for that starter fertilizer market. We continue to see on our, our tissue samples uh, some of the more important micronutrients that we're continually short on are zinc and boron. So we did do some soil fertility strips this year too where we did play with some different sources and some different timings uh, to try and see once what if we put it in the soil, what happens. And so we'll have some data on that. We've got some interesting tissue sample results already but we'll see once the all important part is of course what does it do for yield. Um, we've got our normal micronutrient, we've got some fungicide trials in, in corn, we've also got some sulfur trials in corn we're playing with. Uh, one of the new things we're doing this year in corn that's kind of intriguing, I know a lot of you guys have probably seen some of the high yield contest, uh, high yield uh, contest guys in corn talk about, you know, some of the things that they're playing with and I know one of them is an earlier application of fungicide um, and then maybe dual applications of fungicide. We've played with the herbicide timing of fungicide applications, adding it into the tank when you're spraying weeds, and it just doesn't seem to work. I just can't seem to make anything happen there profitable. But when I'm talking earlier application of fungicides, I'm talking in that, you know, Winfield's got some pretty good data from a preliminary trial last year where they're showing V10 to V14 corn. Uh, V10 to V14 corn is maybe this tall to, you know, maybe shoulder high. The intriguing part about that is it does allow us an opportunity to maybe apply that with a ground rig 
uh, without having to have a high boy or without having to have a plane possibly. A lot of you guys have your own sprayers, could maybe do this on your own if we can see if there's a yield benefit to it. So we've got some actual field level trials of those out. Uh, some of our newer fungicides have better systemic activity, longer residual life, so we're kind of curious what that shows us. I've got a picture here, matter of fact, this is an imagery shot of one of our fields that is already showing us that there's definitely something going on and it'll be real interesting to see if that follows through the yield. But We've also got our normal variety and hybrid trials testing all the new things. We've got some extend flex beans, of course we've got a full test of uh, a lot of lift varieties as we look at the new uh, evolution of herbicide tolerance as we go forward here. So. With that, I just thought I'd kind of touch base on what we're doing this year in our trials. Uh, you know, obviously we'll have a lot of data at harvest time here. Hopefully harvest goes well. We could all use a shot of rain. I think that's kind of very evident. I think we were set up for some really high yields. I think there's still a lot of potential there. We've maybe taken some of the top end off a little bit with some of this dry weather, but uh, some things still look pretty good, and especially beans and corn for that matter. Uh, for that matter too, would really benefit from a shot of rain here yet to help with grain fill and beans are still a few flowers out here uh, that might help us give another five we usually get a, a big boot if we get a little early august rain in soybeans so hopefully we can pick something up here but so with that just wanted to whet your appetite for what's coming and i guess we'll see you next week